I have just returned from a 10-day trip across the Asia Pacific with stops in Hawaii, Guam, Japan, Thailand, India, and South Korea. On the trip, I visited our military installations, spoke with our men and women in uniform, and met with our allies and partners. Everywhere I went, I was inspired to see our men and women in uniform performing so superbly. They work every day with our allies and partners to build a safe, secure, and prosperous Asia Pacific region. We in the United States find ourselves today at a strategic inflection point in national defense. After a decade of conflict, one war in Iraq has ended. The other in Afghanistan has not ended but will transition soon to Afghan lead, thanks to the superb effort of the men and women of US and coalition forces. But while we've been fighting insurgency and terrorism, the world has not stood still. Our friends and enemies have not stood still. And technology has not stood still. So the time's come for us in the United States to look up and look around, look out, to what the world will need next, to the security challenges that will define our future after Iraq and Afghanistan. It's important to note that we would need to make this transition no matter what, but we're subject to a second great current, and that is the need to keep the United States fiscal house in order, as outlined in the Budget Control Act, which Congress passed last year. That act required the Department to remove $487 billion from its budget plans over the next 10 years. In a remarkable process this last winter, steered personally by the President and Secretary Panetta, truly was remarkable and I, unprecedented in my experience, we're building a force for the future. Uh, it's what Chairman Dempsey, our Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, calls the Joint Force 2020. And as Secretary Panetta has said, it's going to be agile, it's going to be lean, it's going to be ready technologically advanced and able to conduct full spectrum operations and defeat any adversary anywhere, anytime. Our new strategy has several areas of focus and the rebalance to the Asia Pacific is one of the most prominent and important. The logic of the rebalance is simple. The Asia Pacific region has enjoyed an environment of general peace and security for more than 60 years allowing Japan to rise and prosper, then Korea to rise and prosper, next Southeast Asia to rise and prosper, and now China, and in a very different way, India, to rise and prosper. And yet none of this was a foregone conclusion when you consider where the Asia Pacific region was at the end of World War II. As President Obama, Secretary Clinton, and Secretary Panetta have noted, the security and prosperity of this region was enabled first and foremost by the enduring principles the U.S. has stood for in the region and that we believe are essential to peace, prosperity, and security. These principles include our commitment to free and open commerce, a just international order that emphasizes rights and responsibilities of nations and fidelity to the rule of law, open access by all to the shared domains of sea, air, space, and now cyberspace, and the principle of resolving conflict without use of force. And in the absence of an overarching security structure, the United States military pre presence has played a pivotal role over those last 60 years, providing nations with the space and the security necessary to make their own principled choices. We intend to continue to play that role. It's good for us, and it's good for everyone in the region. It's often said that security is like oxygen. When you have enough of it, you pay no attention to it. But when you don't have enough, you can think of nothing else. So it's in the nature of things for some in the region to take security for granted. But we can't afford to make that mistake. If that security were ever to go away, if old animosities were ever to take root and conflict to occur, all of the people in the Asia Pacific region that have been lifted up into prosperity in the post-war period would be set back significantly. The global economy 
would be set back significantly. We don't want that to happen. And that's partly why we're rebalancing our efforts in the region.